Ryan Rollins. This is Robbie Eagles. This is the loosest <laughs> in Australian wrestling, Adam Brooks. Hi, this is Eliza Sway. Hi, this is Mimic. This is five times the world's heavyweight champion, the Scrap Daddy himself, Scrap Ryan Adam Pierce, and you are locked in to Wrestle Radio Australia. Welcome to the show. My name is Josh Armour, and thank you for joining us. We bring you Wrestle Radio Australia for free every Friday on iTunes, Stitcher, and we are streaming on TuneIn Radio, the world's radio app. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Josh, it's not Friday yet. Well, we could not wait to bring you this very, very special edition of Australia's wrestling broadcast. Last week, Todd Eastman and myself chatted with Australian TV legend Rove McManus. Now, Rove is a huge wrestling fan. It was really cool to get his views on the world of wrestling. Also, Rove talks about podcasting, the Kylie incident, and his plans for the year ahead. That is coming up in just a minute. But first, I want to give a shout out to the great crew at Adelaide's number one fight fashion label, SubmitApparel.com, who literally make this show possible each and every week. Submit produce fine men's, women's, and kids apparel designed in Adelaide and shipping all over the world. Keep cool with the wide selection of tees, caps, shorts, singlets, and RCW wrestler t-shirts, or get rugged up for winter with the ever-popular hoodies, trackies, and beanies. If you need workout wear, there's T-back tank tops, b-ball shorts for the guys, and for the ladies, leggings and new booty shorts are in stock. If you're a fan of the reigning RCW champ, Matt Grimbasso, you can now show your support with the most brutal t-shirt in Australia today. It's the I Heart Grim t-shirt. And support Australia's hottest new young talent with the new Demi Bennett signature t-shirt. And check this out, folks. In an exclusive offer for you, the Wrestle Radio Australia listener, you will get 30% off your entire order when you use the code WRA at the checkout screen. Yes, you heard that right, folks. 30% off your entire order when you use the code WRA at the checkout. So please, folks, support those who support Australian wrestling and this very show and check out Submit apparel.com It is a real honor for me today folks to introduce our guest. He is a comedian, radio presenter, host of Rove Live, Rove LA, a regular on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, the king of what the and is the man behind Roving Enterprises, responsible for producing 10s before the game, Rove LA, Real Stories, one of my personal favourites, that one, and The Project, which can be seen every weeknight on Australia's 10 network. He is a 16-time Logie winner, including three gold Logies. But of course, to us, he'll be remembered for copping that guitar to the head, courtesy of Double J. It is Mr. Rove McManus. Rove, how have you been? How are you? I'm doing very well, and I agree with you. Despite that uh, exhaustive um, resume that I come with, uh, that uh, guitar shot from Jeff Jarrett is something that I'm very, very proud of. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this interview. That was <laughs> massively long. <laughs> yes, well, you know that, that that's how we do it. You know, Todd, as, as ring announcers, we like to uh, we like to embellish or not embellish, but you know, give it a uh, give it the good sell there. And so we should for our guest. First of all, I guess we got to talk about the fact that you are a a huge wrestling fan. Well, it's been well documented. I mean, you you've never hidden your passion for pro wrestling, which is awesome. Um, what drew you to wrestling initially were you a fan as, as a child growing up yeah it was uh the first wrestlemania uh and i was in uh, primary school at the time and i just i don't know what it was but it just everybody watched it I, it was just on um uh like regular free-to-air television and the next day everybody at my school was talking about it we were all amazed at the uh, King Kong Bundy record breaking nine second match. Um, Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan. We'd never seen any of this before, and uh, and then we all kind of got hooked after that. And there was that sort of boom period in the eighties. And uh, unlike everybody else I know, I just never shook it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I remember when um, I think it was in between. The Channel 9 series of Rove and your Channel 10 series of Rove, you did, like, the Fringe Festival in Adelaide? Yes. And you came out to the Mankind's Entrance music? 
And yes, I swear I to used that for, I used I used that for quite a while actually, yeah. Yeah, I swear to God I was the only one in the audience going, That's mankind's music <laughs> But I've always I've always done that. I've uh, whenever I've toured I've used so I've used um Mankind's Wreck. Um yeah. I've used uh, I used the Evolution uh theme song and uh Batista's I'll Walk Alone was the uh, was the last one I, I used. And yeah, and, and even when I would tour with uh, I did a tour with Peter Hellier and Corinne Grant and Dave Callan and I said to them, Can I can I choose your theme music for each of you to come out to? <laughs> oh, that's uh, so I I had uh, Sable's theme for um Corinne, uh, Dave Callan had Kane's theme and I was very pleased to give uh, Peter Hellier a Billy Gunn's ass man. Nice. <laughs> now, um, did you only ever really watch like the WWE, WCW, or did, have you ever been to like local shows? Yeah, I've, I've done. Uh, I have done local shows. Uh, I, I've actually performed as part of the EPW in Perth. Oh, cool! Um, and and seen a couple of their shows and, and watched quite a few of their DVDs and even have done um, a day's training uh, with the guys. So I've learned how to fall and. Um, uh, do a hurricane rana, which I was very excited about. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, so I had seen a, a bit, a bit of uh, local stuff. Uh, and while I was in Melbourne, I used to go and, and see uh, a few matches here and there when I could too. At um, uh, at Festival Hall and at um, just up the road from me in Richmond at the Corner Hotel. Oh, cool! Yeah, like um, Wrestle Clash, I think it's a Wrestle Rock. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah. Wrestle Rock, they're still uh, they're still putting on shows. They're back, and um, it's great to see them putting on you know some some uh, eighteen plus entertainment for the wrestling fans in Victoria. Let's go to uh, World Wrestling All Stars. It was two thousand and one, uh, and some of the big stars that came down under for that tour, like your Jeff Jarrett, Scott Steiner's, um, some great names. You were heavily involved, Rove, in the promotion, and even had a spot on the Invasion pay per view where we mentioned earlier about uh, Jeff Jarrett giving you the the guitar shot. How did that come about? It must have been a dream come true to first sort of rub shoulders with these guys and then actually yeah. be asked on the show. Like, Well, it was, uh, this was post, uh, you know, buyout of WCW. So these were all the guys who, uh, hadn't had their, uh, contracts picked up by, um, then the, then the, you know, all decided I wanted to, to, to contract. Um, but it was all, all those guys got um, picked up by an Australian promoter. Sorry, we're just lo- we're losing you a little bit there, Rove. Sorry, mate. I'm sorry. Um, that's, uh, that's okay. that's is that better? Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, so um, there was a, a bunch of guys who were uh, writing out their WCW contracts, and an Australian promoter had the idea of trying to start his own promotion, being the, the World Wrestling All-Star. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, he. So knowing that I was a fan and the fact that he was Australian, they they brought Bret Hart down, and obviously being a, a huge fan of him, um, we had him on the show. I fought very, very hard to get him on. We had a lot of people working on our show who didn't didn't want to wrestle on, and certainly didn't think that he was. Um, they they were expecting more of a. Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior type. I think the fact that Brett is a bit soft-spoken, I didn't. They think they were worried he wouldn't be. Uh, he wouldn't be a great guest. Um, and so, yeah, through through that, he came down with Jeremy Borash, who was also invo- involved with the show. And when they came back to town, they said, you know, do you want to do you want to be part of it? And through that, I met Jeff and uh, Nathan Jones. How soon we forget, Mr. Nathan Jones, <laughs> and um, the homesick uh, superstar. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't believe he walked away. Still makes no sense to me. Oh, no, that's unbelievable. Um, and, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, I got to be part of, uh, they did, I think, three tours, one of which I was part of on camera, and the rest um, uh, I just got to hang out with them, and, and that's how I kind of got to rub shoulders with some of the guys that I've, I've grown up with and watched and loved for many, many years. And, and you've remained friends with Jeremy Borash, one of my actual favourite commentators i really do like his style and also i love the whole forever hardcore documentary he made yeah absolutely yes i have remained friends with him and um and jeff as well and uh, i've been chatting with jeff about his new project that he's got working on his new um organization that he's um hopefully getting up with triple a so that'll be very interesting to see what what happens with that and i still 
um, see Brett from time to time. I saw him uh, at last year's WrestleMania. I don't give him there. And uh, a couple of other guys just over the years having had them on the show, like Mick Foley and um, Stone Cold Steve Austin and a couple of those guys. And um, and then a few others like Colt Cabana and, and a few of those sort of younger guys as well. So it's kind of nice to know people in the biz. I get, I get yeah. as, excited, as excited about meeting them as some of them sometimes get about, um, you know, getting to be on the show and meet some of the other people that are on the show. So yeah, spe- speaking of like the WWE and and TNA, what what is your opinion on the product as of late? Because I've I've never heard so many, especially with the internet wrestling community, so much like outrage at the moment of, of the way the storylines are going in the WWE at the moment. Yeah, I think I'm the same as everybody. Um, that the the whole promotion of WWE at the moment is is, is quite. Bad. The whole Daniel Bryan situation has just been handled so poorly. Um, I, I was actually at SummerSlam uh, at the Staples Center in Los Angeles and thought it was great. I was happy with the outcome. I thought his win over Cena and then Orton cashing in made perfect sense. I had people that were not huge wrestling fans who were with me who um, were scratching their head over why I would be happy with that outcome. And I said, well, now you've you've they shattered the fans by giving him the title, but it's been taken off him straight away. And I was excited about the, the chase Bryan title hunt that was about to happen. And mm-hmm. I think it was the uh, night of champions that he won it back. And then the next night on raw, they stripped him of it again. And then I went, this seems to me like it's not going anywhere. And that maybe they don't have a long-term plan for this. And I've felt in day one, they don't, particularly think, you know, the whole storyline of he's not the face, he's not worthy of being the face of WWE, I think there's more truth to that than we think. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you see those yes chants, there is an, I haven't seen anything, anything like that since the days of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, I was, I was and, about to say, and, I've, and, I haven't seen anything like that since the what chance. Yeah, exactly. And for a guy to be that over and they just refuse to do anything with it is, really stupid on their part. And I'm one of those people that is really upset by it. And, and so to be honest, like I haven't, I didn't, I, I was glad I didn't buy the Royal Rumble and it seems it was a, a wise choice. I haven't really bought many of the last pay-per-views over the last few months because of where it's headed. I'll watch Raw, but I'm not going to shell out in America what is $50 for a pay-per-view mm. when I'm not happy with the storylines and the content and where, where the product's going and, I can understand why people like Sam Punk have kind of packed their bags and walked out. As well as, you know, here we are on our way to WrestleMania 30 and I'm looking at where it could go on paper and I just can't see it. Yeah. What, what do you think about the whole Sam Punk thing? Is, is it a shoot? Is it a work? I mean, that, that's the well, question that's going first, along. I thought, at first I thought it was a work. I mean, I'm still, I still have people who say to me that he's, the first time he walked up out after, um, uh, I think it was after TLC when he beat Cena. Yep. Um, was you know that was all part of the, that was all a shoot, and I thought I no we all if, if anyone who knows the Montreal screw job outcome knows that if a man's contract is up and he's definitely leaving, there's no way that Vince McMahon is putting a title on him and he's <laughs> up with it. So at first I thought going into WrestleMania, which is the biggest payday any of them are going to have, he'd be a guarantee on the card in some sort of major main event spot. Uh, the idea of him walking out of the company two months before that, I didn't quite believe. But as time rolls on, it looks like, well, maybe he was. The more I hear about it, the more I hear there's a lot of things he was asking uh-huh. for and he was being promised and that didn't happen. And so maybe it is all legit. Yeah, I'm, I'm still of the opinion is if you don't hear of him meeting anyone or seeing him anywhere near the Chicago Raw, then it's definitely real. Yeah, I've heard that they've intentionally held off uh, Undertaker's return till then in the hopes that it will stop the crowd from chanting. The fact that they haven't... I think Bad News Barrett made a made a reference to it, but other than that, they've kind of kept pretty quiet about it. So unless it's a really well-done uh, work, uh, it sort of seems at the moment that it's something they're trying to push under the rug. But uh, and in the end, it would be, I'm not sure what the outcome would be. Is it him versus Triple H, which is what they were planning anyway? And I don't know that that gives it any more build-up than it needs. 
Yeah, well, I've heard that, and I've also heard that now they're just going to give him Kane. Which doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of that's sort of and that again is evidence of where things are at. You should be able to, and I know that the, the way things work at the moment is so much quicker than it used to be. The turnaround is so much quicker, but it seems like there is no long term feud happening. That you know, that's one of the problems I've almost had with Elimination Chamber being between the Rumble and WrestleMania. They talk about the Rumble being the start of the road to WrestleMania, but when you have the Elimination Chamber and all bets are off as to who could be champion and who could be going in as number one contender, you go, well, how can I invest in, you know, what could be, whether you like it or not, Batista versus Orton? Or is it going to be mm. Daniel Bryan versus Orton? You mm. need to, you know, to then sort of try to ramp up, what, 10, 12 matches for WrestleMania and they've got four weeks to do it? Is, yeah. Is, they make it tough for themselves. That, that being said, though, I listened to... um. John Cena today on Steve Austin's podcast, and they'd already pre-sold sixty thousand seats just on the fact that Batista was at the event. Yeah, and look, you know, at the end of the day, people can complain all they want. You know, I don't know that many people like myself are putting their money where their mouth is and saying, "Well, I'm not going to buy the pay-per-view because, you know, I'm not happy where things are. I'll, I'll find out about the results and I'll keep an eye on it." But there was even a couple of years ago I didn't even order WrestleMania because I was looking at it going, I just it's just not there. And if, 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 no, there's no other choice at the moment unless you yeah. go to DNA. Um, it's not like the days where you could flip over to WCW. And um, But I guess until such time as, you know, the fans kind of either get really vocal as they are pro Daniel Bryan, but they also need to be just as vocal as they were with, Orton and Cena and Batista's win of the Rumble, um, it needs to kind of be kept up and, you know, make the WWE accountable if mm. fans aren't happy. Be- being that you split your time between, like, US and Australia, will you be getting the WWE Network for over there? Um, I think I will. I've, I've looked at it. I haven't kind of committed to doing it just yet. I'm just kind of doing the math on it and going, oh, 10 bucks a month, I guess, you know, I don't buy that many... Of, the pay-per-views at the moment, I haven't been anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the idea of, well, all it would take is, you know, if I was even going to buy three or four pay-per-views during the year, then I've kind of made my money back on it. So, um, but at the same time, I just don't, I can't keep up with the amount of content that I can get for free, you know, <laughs> with with superstars and main event and Raw being three hours and SmackDown, um, you know, there's a... There's a Three hour roars, sorry, Rove, are just absolutely brutal for me. I, I, I find two hours is a comfy viewing time, but three is a bit much, I think. Especially when the whole idea when they did it, they said it's gonna give other talent a chance to kind of step up uh and, and have a bit of uh, on air time. And uh they've done it a little bit with you know, I'm glad to see that Uso's doing as well as they are. I think that's great. Um but then there's a lot of other guys on the roster who are just getting, you know, book to do double duty or you know there's more um more of the guys that you see all the time anyway it's not like suddenly you know zach wright is getting more camera time or anything like that yeah that that's why i i said i've said a while ago that they should just go back to the brand split yeah absolutely i mean you know they've got the talent there and even with nxt they've got plenty of people that are waiting ready to go and yet, you know, then they completely job out someone like Damien Sandow, who's a fantastic character and a, and yes. a, and a brilliant wrestler anyway. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I'm all for the idea of, well, not everybody who has the money in the bank co- contract gets to cash it in and win. It's nice to sort of see that it's not always a guarantee. But the way they went about it, he was just completely jobbed out on the way to it. And then afterwards, they've done nothing with him. So yeah, they've also they'd... got a lot of guys there that they're just absolutely wasting and could they've got five hours of content with their two main shows that they could use guys like that. Exactly right. And and now they've had um, Emma from the, the Australian Emma yeah. has now yeah. debuted in WWE. So, and what, what I've been saying for a while is like, I'll watch your Raws and your Smackdowns and I'll sort of, sometimes I'll glaze through them of that, but NXT I'll actually watch the whole show. And maybe that's mm. only because it's an hour. Well, it's an hour and you don't get all the fluff around it. You know, the, the backstage vignettes uh, are, are exactly as they should be, which is backstage interviews pre-promoting the matches that are coming up. There's so much of the, 
you know, it's Stephanie and Triple H and they're plotting and scheming in their office or something with Brad Maddox. And then you're sitting there going, but there's a cameraman there. What, are we meant to believe <laughs> that there's a camera backstage filming them on this big screen that's being played to the crowd in the arena with the idea of, oh, well, no one's going to find out that we're plotting this or plotting that. Yes, so some of that backstage stuff doesn't quite work anymore for what it's, especially when it comes to promoting what's meant to be something. Oh, that, 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 that reminds me of the whole thing on um, Impact with Sam Shaw. Yeah, exactly. Being the whole, the whole pretty much Dexter, and then as if she <laughs> wouldn't find out that was going to happen to yeah, her. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. I mean, that was, you know, and that's a... Uh, a throw, a, that's a, an idea that's been sitting there since I think um, Nitro were the first to kind of do that to kind of make it look like oh we're showing you backstage. Yeah, and it used to make sense, but but now I think you know the idea of the superstars, the wrestlers actually just having a bit of microphone time. And they did one with Titus O'Neil this week on Raw, mm-hmm. uh, and that's good to see. And, and give them more mic time is is only going to help these guys uh, build up their verbal skills and help develop their characters more than, you know, doing all the backstage vignette stuff that, that doesn't uh, help as much. Yeah, and Ren- Renee Young, she's a great interviewer I've found backstage, and she's been a wrestling fan for some time, so she's not just somebody who, you know, uh, went for an audition call and got the role and is backstage at NXT. She really loves what she's doing, and I think it shows in the the emotion and the way that she approaches the talent with with her her, uh, her questioning and her interviews. I think she's brilliant, really good. Yeah, I agree. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Normally, when you see a new person backstage who's taking on that sort of interviewer role, normally... Yeah, you do roll your eyes and you do sort of look at them as someone who doesn't know what they're doing or is quite clearly doesn't care. But you're right, she really seems like she genuinely wants to be there and because she's a fan, she knows what her role is and how she's meant to be getting the storyline or the or the, the, the character over. And she, I think she does a good job of it in a very limited way. She, she's not a character herself, she just does what she needs to do and does a great job of it. And I, I like the idea of also, you know, Titus O'Neil saying, you know, I smell great. Go on, smell me. Go ahead, Craig. Yeah. You know, knock yourself out. You know, stuff <laughs> like that you can do with her is, is really good. I think it works. Now, um, moving on sort of like to TNA and a lot of your friends that were that, that were there sort of dwindling away, what do you actually think of that, that product at the moment? Well, I think, you know, everything that you see on camera seems to be very much what's happening on camera. It just seems like it's, it's a leaky boat and they're in trouble. And, you know, there was the, after Sting uh, left, I think there was a storyline on the next impact with Magnus saying to Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle, you know, if you, if you lose this match, you too will be fired. And even though quite obviously it's a storyline, the stakes aren't there because I'm looking at it going, you know, well, I don't think as a company you could afford to fire these guys, (laughs) even if there was, some sense of well maybe their contracts are up and we don't know or they storyline in the storylines they would be fired. The the roster there is really dwindling and the guys they've always I think done very well with a with a smaller roster. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the moment it seems it's getting really really shallow and and it, it's starting to backfire on them a little bit because it's hard to kind of come up with fresh ideas and fresh matches. Yeah, I remember watching that episode and thinking, oh shit, are they losing two more people? I know, and if that was to happen, you go, well, now, you know, is Bud going to get in the ring now? What are we going to get people? <laughs> I was like, well, how, how do they build up AJ for almost two years being on and off camera very sporadically, build him up for a huge thing and then not re-sign him? Yeah, and then also that idea, too. I mean, they really have to stop trying to be anything more than they are. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, yeah, that's one of the things you look at NXT. One of the things I love about NXT is those fans are so into the product. They they know the characters. They uh, they support the matches. It's obviously a really small venue that they're in. They have their own chants that they do. You know, when you go and watch Impact, it's, it's like they're trying to be raw. They're trying to be bigger than they were mm-hmm. uh, than than they are. And, and I think that's part of the problem. They, you know, and so when you see even storylines, like the AJ storyline was the CM Punk storyline from two, three years ago. Exactly, yeah. You know, and, you know, they can't, they can't do that. They can't get away with that. And why they don't actually just openly talk about the WWE and say that we are the other guys, we are the alternatives, and actually 
You know, they're trying to play WWE's game where they pretend the other guys don't exist. Or if they do, they don't quite mention them by name. Yeah. It's silly. I kind of think they can get away with actually calling the WWE out. It was one well, of the they used that to. worked really well before. Yeah, that's true. They used to. But now they've kind of stopped doing that. I think it's to their detriment. So, um... Sort of moving on, like you, being that you do live in Australia and sort of in Los Angeles, have you caught any of the pro wrestling gorilla shows over there? I know some actors have actually been spotted at those those crowds, and they are um, some of the best wrestling in the country and the world, really. Yeah, I've I've heard nothing but great things. I haven't had the chance to do that. There is a show called Lucha Vavoom, um, which uh, I do go to regularly, and that is one of the greatest nights of entertainment you will ever see. Anytime I have a friend in town and they have one of the shows on, I will always take them down because you just can't. It's so hard to describe, and I always just say to them, just trust me, just come along. They will be wearing a mask. You'll have to deal with it. Um, yeah, but there is um, there is some really great local stuff um, in L.A., and uh, yeah, I, I'm hoping to see a lot more of it than I have. Colt Cabana is heavily involved in Lucha Vavoom. Am I right there? Um, yes, he is, um, and uh, he's under a mask. Oh, spoilers. But, uh, uh, yes. Oh, Matt Classic. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Classic. I've got one of his T-shirts. I love it. He's yeah, he does, uh, he, does, he does do that quite a bit with his um, – and he's got a mini as well, which is great. Um, <laughs> and uh, also, um, who else is there? Oh, Dirty Sanchez is one of my favourites. Um, the, the Crazy Chickens are fantastic. They've got some oh, – and Cassandro, who – was, if I'm not mistaken, the first ever uh, transgender uh, wrestler. Yeah. And yeah. Um, uh, it, it, it's still great, still got it in the ring, we can do in, incredible leaps off upper balconies onto the floor and, you know, elicits many a holy shit chant on the night. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you'll always get uh, some surprises people who will turn up and uh, sometimes it's, it's uh, some legends of the industry and other times it's people, you know, really well performing in a way that you wouldn't otherwise get to see them. It's great. So you, you are also smart enough to get paid to go to WrestleMania for Jay Leno. So did you spend, <laughs> did you spend the whole week there for it or was it just, just the mania? You, and is that uh, no, I did. I did the, yeah, did the fan fest as well. Did mania. Didn't get to do raw the next night. We were, we had to head back to start editing the next, the next day. Um, but, uh, that was, yeah, my first time, uh, being at Mania and it was, it was great because it was the full backstage treatment and getting to, you know, an all access pass to, to being in the arena and around everything that's going on. I mean, it's, it's just, it's so big and so, uh, overwhelming that, uh, it was tough to kind of have that being my first time. I went. Um, this, uh, the last WrestleMania 29, uh, just as a fan. And that was great to get to actually embrace it and celebrate it that way. Um, because with Leno, we had a camera filming and I think like we missed the uh, start of the show because they wanted to be right up the top to get a particular shot and the, you know, opening match, uh, which is, I think, Edge versus Alberto Del Rio. No, oh, no. Um, so I, I had a, we were trying to set up a shot where I was right at ringside, which they had set up, but it meant I was moving through the crowd when the opening match is happening. I'm going, what? They've opened with the world title match. This is ridiculous. <laughs> what if the title changes and I'm too busy having to film something for the camera? This is so it was, it was hard to kind of get my heart and soul into the night itself. Edge's last match, that one. And who was to know? And even when he did his farewell speech and he said, you know, but it would be nice to know that my final match was headlining at WrestleMania. And you go, well... Not on of, paper it was, because yeah. it was the world title match, but they opened with it. And someone on the night said, um, one of the organisers that we, we were dealing with, said, oh, yeah, they're opening with the world title match. And I thought, I think you've got that wrong. You must mean the US title or something like that. <laughs> and when they did, I was like, that doesn't make sense to me. But then Maybe again, on, because it wasn't a big, it wasn't quite, you know, Undertaker versus Triple H or something like that as far as the two names. But you go, it's the world title. If you treat it as a curtain jerker, then you're really diminishing what that belt means. Well, it, it could have been worse. It could have been the Daniel Bryan Sheamus one. Well, yeah, exactly. When they, you t- <laughs> It must be quite gutting to turn up on the day and go, oh, uh, you know, 17 you're seconds? not going to be on anymore. 
17 seconds? Oh, really? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Or at least, uh, yeah, or at least, well, his first one, that first one was, oh, and you're not even going to be on camera. We're going to, yeah. it's now going to be, it's now going to be the dark match and it's going to become a uh, lumberjack match. So it's kind of not even bother. But the oh. same thing they had with, um, uh, last year it was the mixed tag with um, tons of funk and against the. Um, yeah. No, that got cut completely, didn't it? Yeah, the match got dropped completely. Yeah. Um, so you know, and that's when you sit there going, if the show is four hours, you must be able to plan these matches. Um, and what I heard was it was uh, Punk and Taker went long. Yeah. But you go, you've got four hours. One match going even ten or fifteen minutes over shouldn't make a difference. But then when they've got all this music and video packages and I think P. Diddy performed and stuff like that, you go, well, then, you know, you shouldn't be cutting matches on the night. That's just that's just bad, bad form. Yeah. Now, Rove, as supporters and performers, Todd and myself, in Australian wrestling, being that we're involved with RCW down here in Adelaide, we would love nothing more than to see an Aussie pro wrestling product in some way shape or form broadcast you know to the masses on television do you believe in this day and age with you know wwe having the market share that it does do you think there's any likelihood of an aussie network or production company wink wink um maybe maybe picking up an aussie promotion or creating one even i would say it's probably the latter it might be a creating one i think uh I mean, I've had I have had discussions, or have had people approach me about it before, um, and even you know when I have appeared at the like an APW event in Perth, then I do hear from people in Adelaide, and I do hear from people in Melbourne, I do hear from people in Sydney going, well, we've got organisations here too. So what you would need is some way of combining all the best talent from all those organisations, using them as like the territories, the, the indies to kind of build up the stars who then all get to be on the one big show, whatever that might be. I think just kind of picking one of the pre-existing organisations and, and giving them a, a television contract might not be the best way to go. Yeah. But the idea of there being a, a local show, absolutely, I think. In a lot of ways, it's kind of surprising, you know, with you know cable and even 31 and digital television that there isn't, there isn't some small one-hour slot somewhere that someone mm. isn't willing to kind of hand over to the wrestler. Especially, especially when we have the talent we have. We've got so many guys at the moment wrestling in Japan and, and um, Ryan Rollers is in AAA at the moment. You've got mm-hmm. Matt Silver or Buddy Murphy in NXT and Emma just debuting on the Raw roster. There's a lot of a talent, a lot of Australian talent that they could be showing. Yeah, and it's like anything. It's like the whole reason I started the show, I was doing just being years ago was based on the fact that I like a particular type of show, the you know, talk show genre, but it was only, we could only get the American version of it. And it spoke to an American audience with American guests and made American jokes. And that's okay to a certain point, but it was like at some point it would be nice to have a show that talks to the local audience that is here. And so like- the idea of making a local version of that sort of thing, like a no brainer. And I think that, the exact same can be said for wrestling. I mean, how many tours have to come down here and completely sell, sell out before someone wakes up and takes notice of it? Mm. I, was, I was actually thinking about that today. I was like, we get like Graham Norton's show and the Ant and Deck weekend takeout, I think it's called, or something like that. But you just don't see the Australian version of that anymore. Mm, that's true. And, you know, and the same can be said for wrestling. You know, there used to be um, the old... WCW. Um, yes, that's right. And, uh, you know, they, there was a, an Australian scene, you know, back in the day, and they would get a lot of the US wrestlers like, you know, Killer Kowalski and Bulldog Brower and guys like that who would actually be up against local guys in the same way that it always worked back in the old Territory days. And uh, I think Channel Channel 9 used to used to air it back in the, I think, like the 50s or the 60s, and um, they re-released them all on... Um, DVD a few years back. Yeah, uh, no, I've and got a so few. There, there, there has been there has been a, a an appetite for it, and you know it doesn't need to be out of some huge, enormous arena or something. You can find a studio, a small space, or you know there's plenty of smaller venues that most of these organisations perform in anyway. You can chuck a couple of cameras in there really easy and make it happen. 
Mm. Yeah, well, for for part of the sixties, there Australia was the the top territory in the world, pretty much. You know, as far as drawing a regular house and getting the the big names down here. Um, for a while there in the sixties, yeah, it was even doing doing better than um, than the states. You know, than yeah, and they had local titles that were recognised, um, and a lot of local guys here who went on to like the fabulous kangaroos, like went on to wrestle in the WWWF. Um, so it kind of acted as a feeder territory to find talent and send them overseas. Long before our back Jack came along. <laughs> I just want to quickly ask you, being that yeah, this is a, a podcast, an online radio show, and you've done radio yourself in the past with Oz Stereo and Triple J and whatnot, I mean, would you consider starting your own um, podcast if you had the time, or is there just not enough room on the plate at the moment for... Oh, uh, no, there is. I, I guess that's, that's the, the thing, is that I realise it is, it is a commitment and it's not something you can just sort of start up and do it for, you know, 12 weeks or something like that, like you do if it was a TV show and then you can take a break and do it again. Uh, you really need to keep it up. So it's something that I've thought about. I certainly, you know, I've got a lot of friends that are doing podcasts, both comedy friends and wrestling friends and people in between that are, are doing them. And, you know, the idea of uh, I enjoy listening to them and I enjoy being on them. And so the idea of doing one myself is something that I am sort of toying with. Um, and it would probably be a very eclectic mix of guests considering <laughs> who I like. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think there's an audience for it out there. So, yes, uh, simple answer. It's, it's something I've thought about. I just really, I have to get over the, and I might talk to you guys about it, get over the headache of, okay, um, once I record it, I have to learn how to put it through GarageBand and then upload it to iTunes and do all of that. And I guess once my brain gets to that point, I just go, oh, this sounds too hard. No. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that's I can all... have someone who will just sit down and go, okay, here's how it is. <laughs> I'll, walk you, I'll walk you through the first couple of times you have to upload it and then you'll be fine. Uh, and really, I think once that happens, there probably wouldn't be any reason for me not to do it. We've had enough headaches here as it is. We've had we've had computers failing. We've we've recorded entire programs and we've lost them. And now we've got new software, new computers. It's it's all cranking now. But yeah, it is it is one of those sort of daunting things when you uh, when you you want to put a, a show together and then go okay. Well, because when we did our first uh, podcast, it was back in I think March of last year. I basically just sort of learnt how to. Uh, you know, put music at the start and a bit here and, and, you know, cut the audio and threw it together and, you know, within a couple of days. Um, and if you listen to that first show, it's absolutely woeful. But uh, but you live, and, you live and you learn, you know. Um, that is true. Yeah, I mean, once it's one of those things like anything, I guess, once you sort of get into it and you get the hang of it, it's um, it also becomes a bit of a bug. Like, I, I really look forward to, to putting the shows out every every week and, you know, whether it's Todd's MMA show or, or the wrestling, like, it's um, it's it's really cool. And it also, I guess, it, it's it's really cool to know that, you know, there's people that want to want to hear the show and actually look forward to that every Friday, Saturday morning. So, um, yeah, you do have to sort of keep it up. So, I guess, for us, we sort of think, well... What if what if people are hanging out for an episode? You know, we don't want to let them down. So yeah, exactly. And also, you don't want that stress of, um, like you say, you know, you you like as we're talking now, you know, we've we've made this happen quite quite fluidly through the wonderful world of Twitter. <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, after making it happen, you'd hate to sort of think you you get to the other end and suddenly you're looking at. You know, you go to listen to to the recording and it's not there, or something's gone horribly wrong and it doesn't work. Um, now, I've had situations like that in the past where you've done an interview with someone, and then um, I think the one in the very very early days, um, for our, in fact, it was our first show on Channel Ten. So we started on Channel Nine, moved to Channel Ten, and we did a pre-recorded interview with Kylie Minogue, and you know, put a lot of favours to make it happen. Couldn't get her into the studio, but she, you know, we went and did an interview with her on location. And I was halfway through the, the interview, and then so there's a camera on her and a camera on me. And the cameraman who was filming me just sort of walks away from his camera, like just steps back from it. And uh, I shot him a look like, what are you doing? And then he just kind of started just fiddling with it. And I, so I stopped and said to her, you know, Kylie, sorry. I just, and I looked at him and said, what's going on? I said, oh. He's opened up his camera. Oh, sorry, there's no tape. I forgot to put a tape in. Oh, so he's been recording and there's no back. So we had to say to Kylie, look, sorry, can we start all over again? And um, which meant we had half the time. So it had ended up being 
uh, and obviously in her mind, it wasn't our cameraman. We'd kind of got him from from Channel Ten. It wasn't like he wasn't associated with the show. And uh, yeah, it kind of burned a bridge where you know it took us good few years to get her back on because every time she'd be in town, we'd say, "Hey, can we have you on again?" And she was like, mm, "You guys don't know what you're doing." No. Oh. So wow. you know, but in some respects, good to get that out of the way early. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so it's not too bad, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's well in the days when I was doing Channel Thirty One when I started out, there's a lot of times we were doing a show where you know as as we, we're halfway through, I'm going, is anyone even watching this? I don't even know if anyone can even get this right now. You know, the the signal is so poor and it hits such a small market anyway. There were some times where I'd sit there going, if I get up and walk off the set right now, are we going to get any complaints? Is anyone actually <laughs> watching this thing? But we were there every week. No one got paid and we all did it because we loved it. And I think that podcasting is the new version of that. It's, you know, you can create your own content and get yourself out there in a way that a, in many ways is a lot easier and a lot more accessible than anything ever has been in the past. Yeah, I've I've had harsh words with Josh this week about this interview, saying it it better so record. Should. It better God, record. So you should. I know. Well, you got to lay the law down with these technical types. Yeah, sure. It's, it's like you're like a WWE tag team. You've been around long enough now, where they go. You know what? Let's split them up. Oh God, yeah. why? The why keep team. this going? Don't go there with the tag team reference, Rove. He's going to go to town in a minute. Yeah, what the oh, I'm God. Sean, you're Marty. Yeah. yeah all right. All right. Oh come like, on, hey now. I'm just looking for a barbershop window. Hey, you guys would look great with those bow ties on too, those little bow ties. Oh, great. thank you. <laughs> it up. Yes. Um, one, sort of a, one of the questions sort of to wrap it up. You've been lucky enough to sort of chat with guys like Stone Cold, your John Cena. If there was one guy throughout of all of wrestling that you could sit down and have just a one-on-one chat to, who would it be? Oh, wow. Um, at the moment... Uh, I mean, probably CM Punk. Um, I've that'd probably be the biggest yeah. interview in the world at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I, I know him, um, and not well enough to sort of be saying to him, "Hey, what's going on at the moment?" But <laughs> um, you know, when when we see each other, we say hi. Um, and uh, but I've never actually so I've had the opportunity to sort of sit and hang with him, but never properly sort of sit down and, and interview him. So um, that would certainly be it. Uh, other than that, obviously, I, I think, you know, the, for me, I'm a massive mark for Bret Hart. I always have been. And so the fact that I got to interview him and to the point where I ended up mentioned in his autobiography is almost enough for me. So <laughs> if, uh, if, if, I, if I don't reach anything near that ever again, uh, I'm, I'm quite fine. But, yeah, it, it in the here and now, certainly the guy I really love is. is That's punk, good. So now I'm going to have to go back and reread like the 700 pages of the Bret Hart autobiography. Oh, it's in there. Say. Trust me. Oh, <laughs> trust me. It's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, Rove, to wrap up just real quick, you're heading back to LA very soon. What are your plans for um, for 2014 and what can your fans expect from yourself? Uh, well, um, there's uh, a, a new show that I will be hosting uh, out of the States, which hopefully um, people will get to see here. We'll see down the track. And uh, I do have plans to hopefully have some other stuff um, later in the year that might be more based in Australia and there's without giving too much away a show that I think for fans of wrestling like myself if it was to happen I think we'd all be very happy new, um, new, new I'm, backstage I'm interview of her triple A uh, it's uh, okay I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna put the rove in RCW I think yeah. that's, 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 <laughs> the boys would be very happy for that. sounds great I think it sounds great <laughs> But, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I, I certainly have uh, a couple of things on the boil. One's a, a definite, but the rest will sort of see what happens. And, unfortunately, the nature of this industry is until it's a guarantee, until it's almost on air, you you just keep tight lips about it. But uh, certainly uh, there will be plenty of opportunities for everyone to um, hopefully see me before the end of the year. Awesome. And with all our guests, before we let you go, get the plugs out the way, the Twitter, the Facebook, all of that sort of stuff, roving enterprises, get it out there, mate. 
Well, sure. Um, I am at Rove on Twitter. I managed to steal that one, which is great. Um, Insta Rove on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, Rove McManus. There's an official page there, which I do um, I, I do correspond with. So, um, I mean, Twitter's best, but um, certainly uh, I'm out there. Uh, and, yeah, uh, yeah obviously the, we've got the, the project on Channel 10. Um, Channel 10 is still on air, isn't it, I think? Yeah, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, then uh, keep an eye out for through through my tweets and my Facebook posts, and you'll keep tabs on everything else that's coming up uh, with yeah. me before the end of the year. And and trust us, he does answer tweets. <laughs> yes, this is proof, absolute guarantee proof. <laughs> Fan friendly is Rove McMahon as well. Rove, again, we can't thank you enough for sitting down and, and joining us here via phone, via Skype on Wrestle Radio Australia. All the best to you in 2014. And yeah, it's, it's just been awesome to have you on the show as fans. And as I don't know about Todd, but as someone myself who, well, yeah, Todd, you saw, you saw your stand up show years ago. I mean, the show on Channel 9, the original Rove program still to this day one of uh, one of my favorites and um the dvd gets pulled out quite often and uh put in the ps3 and uh, good laughs are had from that one it's great stuff well thanks very much i appreciate that and uh, i appreciate you guys asking me to to be on it's always nice to talk to fellow fans about everything we love so much we complain about it let's be honest <laughs> but deep down we if we didn't love it so much it wouldn't aggravate us so much but uh, it's always nice to get to talk to like-minded people who just love the world of professional wrestling. And I look forward to heading back to South Australia, where apparently, according to Who Do You Think You Are, the, the family tree show, I have distant relatives that were some of the first settlers in Adelaide. So it yeah. seems uh, I am South Australian royalty, so uh, all the <laughs> farmers union and fruit chocks I can eat for the rest of eternity. Um, I will be the hidden new benefactor at RCW. I will be the MVP of RCW. Oh, God. Oh, you are always <laughs> invited, that's for sure. And I actually, we, gosh, we're running over time, but I, I caught that uh, Who Do You Think You Are episode last night, and it was actually quite fascinating because my father um, messaged me halfway through, and he said, your grandfather was in Crete at the same uh, time that, that, that your pop. Uh, oh, mine was. Oh, right. Yeah, and I was just like, wow, mind blown. That's how small Adelaide is. It's still, <laughs> it's still very, a story. Yeah. <laughs> Where the more we try to leave, the more it keeps pulling us back in. <laughs> and on that note, we will wrap it up here. So, again, Rove McManus, thank you very, very much for joining us. A pleasure, guys. Thank you very much. Well, folks, that will do it for this monster interview edition of Wrestle Radio Australia. Again, a big thank you to Rove McManus for joining us. And now, folks, what we need you to do is subscribe free of charge. You can do it on iTunes, Stitcher, and you can add us to your stations as well in TuneIn Radio. If you do stop by iTunes, we'd love a rating, a review while you're there. That helps the algorithms. We'd love your feedback. Hit us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash Australia, facebook.com slash Armour and facebook.com slash Todd Beast Eastman and there is a new Facebook group as well where you can interact with us and other listeners. If you're on Twitter, you can tweet and follow us at WrestleRadioAU, at JoshJDArmor and at Beast Eastman. As always, a big thanks to my good mate Todd Eastman who you can hear also on MMA Radio Australia. Dane Davies, thanks for your cover art, mate. Thunderstag out of Melbourne, thank you for the music. SubmitApparel.com, thank you for your support. And of course, once again, big, big thank you to Mr. Rove McManus. But most of all, as always, I want to thank you, the listener. Until next time, I'm Josh Armour, and this has been Australia's wrestling broadcast, Wrestle Radio Australia. Saints and sinners, lovers and losers, cuts and run wild with the hounds of hell. Brothers and sisters, show no mercy. Kiss your sons and your daughters goodbye. Been there, done that, heard it all before. Shoot up and spit out, we won't take no more If you wanna live, you're gonna have to fight Every day's a Friday, every night's a Saturday night
Here's where the action is Here's where the action is Here's where the action is Thanks oh, again dear. for asking me. That was uh, that was a, that was a hoot. I had a ball. I I and I also figured like you know I thought well yeah you're a wrestling fan so I mean it's um because I don't know how many yeah wrestling fans you know you sort of know yourself or that are mates so I thought um oh maybe you might want to pop on and, and have a have a yarn and uh, yeah it was, it was a heck of a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good to it's good to have. It, it's funny how the, the amount of people you meet and even if. It's almost like a secret handshake as much as it's, you know, I keep talking about all my friends were into it and now most of them aren't. But it's funny how all it takes is to meet someone who even just has a, a passing um, interest in it. And it's yeah, like a secret handshake where you kind of, you know, if you were lean across and just kind of go, oh, so what do you think about the whole punk issue? It's away you go. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a nice way to bring people together that uh, otherwise might not have crossed paths. Yeah, I run into a lot of them because I have an extremely large collection of wrestling shirts. So yeah, well, I, I, me too. I, uh, uh, it's, uh, I, I think I was, I was walking down the street in, uh, I can't remember, it must have been Los Angeles, I think. Oh, it was actually no, it was London. It was London for the Olympics, and passed the guy, and he had a CM Punk T-shirt on, and I just, as he walked past, I just looked at him and went. Best in the world. Yep. And he gave he he gave me a knowing look, and I was just like, "Yep." It's, it's, it was that was pretty cool. I enjoyed that. I had um, I was walking through Adelaide, and I was wearing a respect the beard shirt. Cool. And Very my cool. Fi- my fiance, the, my fiance was going. I can't believe I'm letting you outside wearing that. And dead <laughs> set everywhere we went, someone was like, "That's an awesome shirt." Nice. Very nice. And that's the, that's the best part of it. If they if they do it properly. It's a it's a it's a cool shirt that that isn't obvious yeah. as a as a, rest, as a wrestling shirt, uh, and so you can wear it and not feel stupid. And then those people who do know what it's meant to be suddenly it's yeah it's like a cool little badge of honor you get to wear. Yeah, well, if I go out to dinner and it's like a nice place, I'll wear that um, the service station shirt, the Colt Cabana one. Oh yeah, right. I'll wear that everywhere and get away with it perfectly. <laughs> I've got a uh, I the the I Jewish star cult T-shirt which I yes. like and that classic T-shirt, um, which is a little more obvious as a wrestling shirt, but uh, but it's it's a nice fit, it's a nice cut. The man knows his merch. That's right, he does indeed. He certainly does know his merch. That is very true. <laughs> well, thanks okay. again, guys. Yes, thank you very much, sir. And, and uh, enjoy enjoy the rest of the week. You too, and yeah, if you ever um, if you ever keen for a, for a yarn about the old the old wrestling, then uh, yeah, hit us up. We've will do absolutely. We'll do. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. No worries. You have a safe trip over to uh, LA, mate. Will do. Thank you. It's kind of out of my hands, but I'm hoping the pilot does a good job. <laughs> <laughs> See you, boys. Thanks. See you Bye. later. Thank you. Join Josh Armour and Todd Eastman every Friday for Wrestle Radio Australia. Covering WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, and Australian Pro Wrestling. Exclusive interviews including Buddy Murphy, Adam Pearce, TV legend Rose McManus, and many others. Download for free on iTunes or Stitcher, and stream us on the TuneIn Radio app. It's Australia's wrestling broadcast. It's Wrestle Radio Australia.